and welcome to this MIM Plus module, Duty of Care. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to your two primary trainers and the developers for this module, um, Lucy Foster and Tracy Kautzman. First of all, I've got to thank you so much for all of the work and dedication you've put into this module. It's extremely kind of you to have given so much time to this. And it's a very important topic, which I know that, you know, you watching this as trainees will get a lot out of this. Um, We've had a lot of discussions and it's been fascinating. I mean, actually, the first discussion we had about this was my first meeting with anyone post COVID, I remember back in London. So <laughs> from that meeting, we, um, you very coherently came up with a structure for this module. And I think just in this introduction, obviously I want to introduce you to our trainees. So first of all, let me do that. Tracy, would you like to tell me a bit about who you are and what you do? Thanks, Dutton. So yeah, Tracy Kautzman, I'm with Impact Group. I'm the director, the director of Global Client Relations. And um, just for those of you who don't know, Impact Group is a career development company. And in the uh, industry, in the relocation industry, we're best known for partner support and cross-cultural coaching. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Tracy. That's brilliant. And Lucy, lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too. Nice to be here. Um, yes, I'm Lucy Foster. I also work with Tracy at Impact Group. Um, I am a global account manager um, and I'm also still a little bit of a part time coach as well. I actually started with Impact Group 10 years ago as um, the coach, career and transition coach for spouses moving into Dubai. And then I moved back to the UK and I've moved into the account management role, but I still do keep a little bit of the, the coaching going on as well. So it's nice. So I see that full 360 um, of the, the assigning experience of what we're going to talk about today and how really it manifests itself in practice as well. Thank you so much for, for saying that. And again, you know, from the point of view of the MIM programme, we, we put we placed a great emphasis on that one to one coaching piece that's so important. And in a way, I guess my next question is you're going to expand on that. So why duty of care, why is this a topic that you feel is so vital to the people on the receiving end of mobility services? So I think um, duty of care and employee well-being, assigning well-being are things that we've been talking about in the mobility space um, for a couple of years. It's been kind of becoming more prevalent, even pre-COVID, you know, there was a lot about um, mental health, assigning mental health and well-being. Um, but for us at Impact Group, I mean, we've been doing this since inception because really all of our piece um, from the spouse partner support, um, single support and cultural training, it's all part of that additional duty of care, um, which is supplementary to, I guess, the traditional idea of duty of care. So. Um, I think when we were first talking about this, it, it was just something that we were thinking, well, we talk about this all the time. This is on our wheelhouse. This is in our space. But we're very aware that for other people who don't work directly in this field, it, it's something that's very hard to define. Um, and I think as well, it's a concept that people think, yes, they know it's important, but they don't necessarily know why it's important. Um, and actually what it means and how to talk about it um, and with their with their clients with the people that they're working with so really we just wanted to develop something that is it's a, a, a basic i guess a one-on-one -on -one of, of duty of care so that it will help people working in our space working with the signees and their families kind of understand what it means and the implications of it I, again, th this is why this is such an important, fascinating topic. And I mean, from your point of view, again, you very neatly alluded there, and I'm glad you did to the fact that this is something which is becoming more um, prevalent within the consciousness of our industry. But you've been doing this for decades. I mean, this is the, the core business of what you do. So, Tracy, we were talking before the call about the kind of the distinction between what, what you would say was traditional duty of care versus extended duty of care. Yeah, um, and, and we are not undermining that traditional duty of care, and that's why this is part of the module. It's part of really fully understanding as mobility professionals that duty of care now is not just the important part of the traditional um, uh, safety, immigration, tax, et cetera, part of duty of care. However, we are saying that 
um, companies and, and the companies that you as professionals will be working with need to be mindful of the well-being of the employee in, a, um, in, in that emotional side, in the integration side, in the well-being of their families, and, and really uh, not making that just a nice to have or that soft service that we've often heard it said. Um, we, Lucy and I, are talking to client companies all the time as well. And it's not just for the assignee anymore. It's for permanent moves. It's for um, their employees. They know that if they want to retain their talent, that they need to be mindful of the well-being of their employee. And so that's why we both, and Dom, you are a huge advocate of this, know just how important it is to extend that duty of care to those services that focus on the well-being of the family. I, again, you brought that to the fore in this module because, again, I mean, we've been talking about so-called soft topics for decades within our industry, and these are not soft topics. I mean, I, uh, years ago, I remember seeing the Holmes and Ray um, social impact readjustment scale of, you know, life impacts and have it, and the relocation experience scores like the highest if you take those components. This is a, a really big deal and it does really impact on people's mental health. So in terms of, you know, what we're going to look at in this module, we're really looking at not just the awareness of the topic, but the expertise that you can bring to the understanding, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think what we've tried to do in the module is sort of separate I guess, from that legal obligation, what employers are legally obliged to do in the sense of duty of care within employment, but also then drawing and adding on to that to what is their moral obligation. And when you think about the fact that you are picking up your assignees and their family members and by association, then, you know, elders, pets, all the rest of it, and you are planting them somewhere else, there is a moral obligation or there should be a moral obligation. And I think as um, the workforce changes and as the workplace changes, you know, assignees are, are demanding more and more that extra duty of care, that moral obligation. And, and that's what we're talking about in, in this module is that distinction and how to cross that over and how we as experts in the relocation space can educate our clients on that where need be or advise them and be that partner to them to make sure that they are fulfilling both that legal and that moral obligation yeah no absolutely and again tracy you mentioned in the context of that as well the notion of, of talent retention um again that you know this is something that may in the part i mean just the personal experience when we were relocated um, to the US and to Central America, it was like, oh, go and talk to the neighbours. They did it as well. That was, you know. <laughs> exactly. No, I, I think, I mean, it's true. We talk about talent retention as if it's, it's, it's a buzzword right now. However, it's such a reality. And I know even in our industry, I mean, we just finished Jura, um, just trying to find staff right now and trying to retain it is not easy. And so that, that employee well-being is is part of that and and the the clients that you global mobilities that are going to be taking this module um they are looking for solutions to make sure that they have they have talent they have managers directors and families that will stay with them and not go to the competition so it is it it, it is I mean, what we are hoping what Lucy and I and Dom what we're all hoping for really is that you that are doing this module really come out with some subject matter expertise and wording and knowledge to make sure that you become that SME for your client and that you can best um, advise them on what's best for their policy and for their assignees and for their, you know, permanent contractors if, if you're working with that, those, that, that in, those individuals as well. I think this is the this is the great sort of link together that we've been talking about in, in Europe for, for decades, literally mm. between, you know, being a supplier and being a partner, being able to assist and advise on policy because you're aware of where, you know, you can be a, a true policy partner to to the corporations and to the people that you're moving on behalf of the actual individuals. Listen, thank you so much. It's a fascinating module. Um, I, I, I know that anybody who's watching this is going to really 
really enjoy it. I mean, I, let me just ask each of you if, you, if you would say there was one, one thing that you would like, I mean, you've already alluded to it, but one thing you'd like people to get out of this, one thing that they can take away and think, okay, this I get, what would it be? Oh, I'll go first. Um, I think for me, it's getting away from that traditional idea of soft services being soft services. They're not soft services. They're, they're really the business imperatives, they're business critical. You know, when you look at why assignments fail and the expense that incurs, really, I mean, it's it's mainly family and it's mainly the spouse. It's, it, it is those, those services and that additional duty of care that can make the fundamental difference between success and failure in assignment. So I think the same line, but I'm going to yeah. add that um, uh, that that you don't consider those soft services, um, the 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 education consultancy language, um, cross cultural healthcare that extends to mental health, for example, that those are not just nice to have anymore and that it's really vital and important. If you can take that away and really, and just realize just how important it is for the employee and their household, um, that would be a real win. 100% agree. Listen, Tracy, Lucy, thank you so much for developing this. I know that, you know, you um, Venues on this module are going to get a huge amount out of it. Um, but honestly, I can't thank you enough for bringing this really important topic into Europe and into our training program. So thank you so much, guys. Speak soon. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks.